Greetings, greetings, everyone. This is the Alternative Guy back here again with another video. This video is a very, very important video. Uh, it's information that has been well hidden from us, and it's time that we bring this information out. We know that our people have... Uh, we're constantly struggling with the same thing over and over and over again. Every year we got the same problems. We got we got to always be putting up with these little dog and pony shows with the politics, without with the um, just all the stuff that's going on, and we're trying to get our people and just people in general to understand what's going on with us as a people. And what I want to do now is to share with you a short video of two brothers, uh, Professor Robinson and Dr. Robinson. And the title of this video is What Makes Black People Different? I'm not going to go into any details about this because I want to share this video with you guys. This video will help you understand why we are different because we're constantly trying to say, well, how come we're being treated a certain way? Uh, why can't we all get along? But we need to understand that there's a reason for that. And in this video, after watching it, I think you might understand a little bit more about it. So I'm going to share these two brothers with you, and they're going to be explaining to you what makes Black people different. My brother and I read a book called The Mark of Oppression. And this mark, this, these two publishers, publishers, Cardiner and Overseer, said that they could not understand how it is that a, a group of people, African American, have been bludgeoned over their heads mentally and spiritually for hundreds of years and are still surviving. They couldn't understand it. And they said so in their book. The answer came out in 1996 why it is that not only have African Americans survived the worst mental and spiritual bludgeoning of any people in recorded history, but they are becoming champions of everything in which there is a level playing field. No matter what it is, we predominate in every field. This is why they won't teach our children African history because they know that once our children get on the same level playing field as their white counterparts, that they will dominate just like we dominate in basketball, baseball, football, track and field, and anything else in which there is a level playing field. So that while they teach their children about the greatness of their European ancestors, they won't teach our children about the greatness of their African ancestors, because then that would be a level playing field in academia. And they know that we will predominate, just like all of these examples we've given them, that our children predominate when they know who they are from the African historical point of view. Now, here's what I found out in 1996. A group of geneticists wrote this book, Look, a tiny book. Geneticists. Can you identify where they're from and the group, how it came about? Yeah, okay. All right, sure. Yes, indeed. As a, an organization is called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The American Association for the Advancement of Science. Now, this organization is composed of people who study about DNA and the genome, and you've been reading about the DNA and the genomes. Well, this group of scientists came upon an idea 
by accident at, at first that different groups of people had different numbers of DNA series. Explain that. Now, a DNA series means that when your DNA is located and say they get a hair from your head and they you're subjected to certain tests, they think, well, this is the DNA of Minister Brown. And you are the different from everybody else in the world. All right? Then they found further that not only are their DNA series different, but the number of DNAs in there are different in different groups. Whites have a different number of DNA, and blacks have a different number of DNA series. Apes have a different number of DNA series. Then they found this amazing thing. That the greater the number of DNA series, the smarter the person, the group is, the greater the probability of genius within that group. So they tested the orangutan, these 15 geneticists from around the world. That now these geneticists came from nine different universities. And we have here on the cover of the pamphlet they put out. The names of these geneticists. And you can see them right there, right beneath, right beneath the title of this pamphlet. Now this pamphlet, most people have no idea what it means. But breaking it down and after you study it, and have it explained to you by a geneticist, a trained geneticist, you will find that they're talking about DNA series. Now, here are the names of these 15 geneticists from around the world, University of Japan, University of China. Yale University is the headquarters of this organization called the American Association for the advancement of science. And you see it down there. Now this was copyrighted in 1996. All right. What it said is this, and this is, this is the mind-blowing part. It said that when they tested the orangutan, they found out he only had three DNA series. When they tested the gorilla, they found that the gorilla has four DNA series, but they're a little, he's a little smarter than the orangutan. They tested the chimpanzee, which is an ape, and found that he had five DNA series. Then they went into, they went all into the different races of the world. They went into Europe and tested the DNA series of the English the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russians, and found they had six DNA series. Then they put all of this, what they found from around the world on a map. And this map really is called the intelligence map of the world because they tested 116 different human groups and found their DNA series number. All of them, all over the world, have six. And they put the numbers in form of a little flag that you can see on this map. These little flags have a color. And they show, oh, this is, this is upside down. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And they show that the English have only six, and all into Europe, only six, went over into Japan and China, and they only have six, over into America with a predominantly European, and they only have six. Then they came to Africa, and they came to the part of Africa. Now, all the rest of them, they put in little flag colors. Those flag colors are, are orange red, if you notice. But when you come to Africa, found out 
that the African people have nine. Nine DNA series from here just below the Sanzai Empire down to the foot of Africa. All those 10 nations of which African Americans descended from one of them, we have nine DNA series, the greatest possibility of genius in Africa. Now it's answered this age old question. How can a people survive being told they're nothing for 400 years, never allowed to learn that they came from beautiful cities and told they came from a jungle? How could a people survive? How can a people become champions in everything they touch? Because they have nine DNA series, while the rest of the world has only six. This is why they copyrighted this. And you notice on the outside of this, now this map is taken, I took this map right from this page here. And I blew it up so that the world could see it. Even though this is copyrighted, I can't let you have this book because it's copyrighted. The title of the book is called Low Global Patterns of Linkage, Disequilibrium at the CD4 Locus and Modern Human Origin. <laughs> Global Patterns of Linkage, Disequilibrium at the CD4 Locus and Modern Human Origin. Now you have to be a geneticist to even know what, that to what they're talking about. But when we broke it down and interviewed uh, Dr. Kidd, the head, he's the chairman at Yale University. He broke it down into plain everyday English so that the world would know that the African American is descended from those people who gave to the world the Great Pyramid, gave to the world science, gave to the world mathematics. Black man in our mode gave algebra to the world 3,700 years ago. It's in the world books, in the, it's in the encyclopedias. They don't want our children to know this because then that would make the level, the playing field level for white children. And you know what happened when they moved the playing field level in basketball and allowed black men to play. Out of 29 of the top seeded players in the world today, 28 are African American. When they opened up the Penn Relay, when they opened up the Olympics and allowed blacks to run back in 1932, we've won all the gold medals. And the same thing will happen in the classroom when they allow our children to learn their African history. That's what this is saying. Dr. Okay, so now what we want to do now is uh, we're going to have the the um, the link to the video, and you also can go. I know. I guess you saw on the on the screen when he was when the brother was talking. It had uh, tapevideos.com. You can also go and find that lecture by Dr. Robinson and his brother on that website. But I just wanted to share with you guys a bit of information so that we would understand why we've been held down, why we've been suppressed and enslaved all over the world so that everybody else can utilize our talents, our energies to benefit them. And so we need to understand what has taken place. Once we get a clear understanding of what's going on and why it's going on, 
then we can make some major changes. We'll continue to bring you informative videos about what's going on in the world and how we can compete and be as strong and as healthy as the people as we possibly can. Continue to watch. Peace.